Welcome back everyone, Triple M here. In today's video, I am going to show you how to set up your media server that can truly replace Plex, replace NB, replace Jellyfin. This is completely under your control and this is free once you make the initial investment. Now this is Synology's video station and this comes with every Synology NAS. So if you have a Synology NAS or you're thinking about getting one, watch this video. Let me know what you guys think of this. So I am going to show you how to set everything up, how to configure everything. Then I'm going to show you some of the ins and outs just to make sure your media server is successful. So before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. Let's go. So starting this video, I am assuming that you either have a NAS or you already have a NAS configured. And if you guys want me to do a setup, an initial setup of a network test storage from Synology, drop it in the comments. I do have a couple products that I still need to review, so that might be coming anyway. But once you log into your network test storage or NAS from Synology, this is kind of what you're going to see. So the app that we're going to be using today is the video station. Now this comes built in, but it won't be set up initially when you start up your NAS. So first thing, once you get everything set up, you're going to go into your package center. Package center should be on your desktop, but if it's not, you may have to click in this area and you should see package center right here. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go ahead and search for video station. You can see I have it right there. Mine's already installed, but if you haven't had it installed, go ahead and install it. So once you have it installed, it's not going to be on your desktop like mine is. You're going to have to add it to your desktop yourself. So we're going to click in the top left. We're going to see the new application right there. All we have to do is right click on this and add it to the desktop and it will now display on your desktop. So that's just getting the application installed and ready to go. The other thing that you wanna do is you wanna figure out how you wanna organize your media. Of course, you'll need to add your video files to certain folders within your NAS. And let me just show you how I have mine set up. So you wanna go to file station this area right here, you want to go ahead and you want to right click and create a new folder. Now mine is called Plex Media because I do have Plex Media server, so I'm kind of sharing content. But if you're someone who's just starting out fresh, you want to right click here, you want to create a folder and you want to make sure that you organize it how you want to set up your library. So in my Plex Media, you can see I have a folder for children, I have movies, I have music, I have photos, TV shows, DVR recordings. That's how I chose to set mine up. So even within movies, if I click on that, you can see I have different genres in there. Again, my preference, but um, at least you want to have a movies folder. You want to have a TV show folder, maybe a photos folder and whatever else you seem fit. So I'll show you how to link these to your video station here in a little bit. Also very important, and I'll demonstrate this here in a little bit once we get into the actual um, thumbnails and how to get those to sync up. There's a certain way you want to name your content, guys. When you add your videos to your library, you want to name them just like I'm about to show you. If you look at Ramble First Blood, this is how you want to name every one of your movies, guys. You want to have the name of it, then you want to put a year in parentheses, then the file extension or file type. So just like you see it here, Rambo First Blood, year.mp4. Here's another one, another example, another one that I changed. Flags of Our Fathers, 2006.mp4. Guys, if you name it just like I just told you, as soon as you launch Video Station, all of your files will automatically update. All of the thumbnails will be up to date and it will just make your life easier. So take that into consideration. All right, so we have our folder set up. We have the Video Station app installed. We're gonna go ahead and launch it. Now, when you first go in, you're not gonna see anything on here. It's gonna be blank and you're gonna have to go in and set up your library. So we're gonna click on the settings there and we're gonna click right here. You can see we have library and this is where we get to pretty much configure it. So you can see I have three basic libraries. I have movies, I have TV shows, and also have my home videos. So what you wanna do, what I did is just click the add. So let's, let's do another one. We're just gonna name this one horror movies. Leave it public, we're gonna click okay. All right, so now you can see horror movies is right here. Now we wanna link horror movies to that particular folder. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. We're gonna 
select the folder and basically all the files that you named or all the folders that you added within your server will pop up here guys so for this one i'm gonna go back into plex media i'm gonna go on the movies gonna go down to horror highlight that folder hit select all right then i'm gonna click ok telling me that the folder already has a parent folder please specify a different one so um just an example guys but that's how you'll essentially go in so let me cancel out of this so basically because my movies already has that main folder included it's not going to let me just do that folder so if you wanted to maybe not have movies there just have horror movies and war blah 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 whatever you decide that's completely up to you you can set it up how you want but uh, let me click on the set in here select so you can see for this area all i select was plex media then i just select movies and that's the folder all my movies are referencing. So same thing with TV shows. I can do the same thing if I have home videos, I can do that. So a lot of different options here. So once you select your folders, you can see it will create them to the side. So I have the movies, the TV shows, the home videos, whatever else you want. Everything will be right here. Now I can click on them individually. So you can see movies is right there. All right, some of the thumbnails loaded, some didn't have tv shows all right those didn't really load recordings nothing in there yet so it is going to take some time to find what it needs to but not all the thumbnails are going to come through especially if you don't have that name and convention that that i had mentioned so we'll let that work in the background but in the meantime we do have a couple things that we'll need to do we do need to set up our metadata the metadata is going to pull from this website unfortunately you do have to sign up for an account and once you sign up for an account you need to pull that api key and put it in the video station that allows it to pull directly from the website pull all the thumbnails all information definitely a must have in my opinion so once you get to this website is it's the moviedb.org you will go ahead and sign up for an account you're going to click on your profile you're going to go to your settings then click on API and right here is the key that you'll need to copy and paste it in the video station. So let's go back over there, video station, click on the settings right here where it says video info plugin. You want to go ahead and click on that. All right. So you do have the movies and TV shows. Those are two databases that I have set up. So you can set both to actually pull from the same source. So what we're going to do, you can see where it says movies, we're going to click on that. We're going to edit right here where it says api key that's where you're going to paste that in paste in the api key test connection and once you see that successful connection you know that you're good to go all right click ok again and for tv shows you're going to kind of do the same thing you're going to edit test the data connection and it should be good to go so you can see everything's still indexing a lot of um, thumbnails start to populate still working so We'll give it some more time like i said but so far looking pretty good in my opinion so while we still wait we can see we do have a couple options up here uh you can actually you can edit the view so you can view tile you can view list i find that thumbnails is probably the, the best looking in my opinion especially when everything's loaded um you can see it's starting to come together really good but very important as well if a thumbnail doesn't show up doesn't populate like these have been populated you can go ahead and force it all right, this is rambo first blood we're going to edit video information all right nothing's been found this is what we want we're going to search for video info plugin all right i'm going to hit search english and what it's doing is hitting that database and it's going to kind of find what we're looking for. So which one are we looking for? It was First Blood and it was 1982. So we're going to double click on that one. You can preview the poster, what it looks like. This is the poster. This is the backdrop for when you get on your, your streaming devices. And I'll show you the fire stick here in a little bit. All right, we're going to click OK. And now it should update everything in the background. And you can see First Blood just popped up. So like I said, so far, this has given me ultimate control of just getting everything together as far as thumbnails, getting um, the library how I want it. You can see it's still updated in the background. We'll let it finish. But once it's done and I see that anything's missing, I can go ahead and update it. And it looks and works 
exactly like Plex does. All right, so let's jump over to the Fire Stick. Then I'll show you on the mobile application that this works even when you're not in the household. So on the Fire TV Stick, you go to your app store, you're gonna search for DS Video. I uh, should pop right up. Same thing for the Apple TV and other streaming devices. You are gonna click on it and sign in. Now signing in, you have two options. You can either sign in with your IP address or your Quick Connect ID. Now, if you're in the household, IP address is probably an easier way to go because the IP address will be the IP address of your network attached storage. However, if you know your Quick Connect ID like I do, you can always sign in, then input your username and password and it should let you right in. All right, so once you launch it for the first time, it is gonna bring you to the home page, movies and TV shows, whatever else you got going on. All right, um, for me, for this video, we are focusing on the movies. So go to the movies area. You can see everything's still starting to come in as far as the thumbnails. And like I said before, whatever doesn't show up, I can always go back in and update those manually. So everything looks really good so far. You can see I do have most of the thumbnails that came in, which I'm surprised, but you can search by just released, by just watched, just added. You can search by folders as well. So remember I was telling you guys that I have subfolders under my main movies folder. So you can see I have 4K content there. I have action, adventure, comedy, um, war, horror. So all of those categories can be viewed by folder. So let's see what I have in 4K. So I have Lego, Batman, which I, Still have to update, but if I click on this, all right, let's play it. And you can see that's coming in with no problems. All right, so remember when we did the, the manual push for the thumbnail, it did have two photos. One was the main thumbnail, one was the background. So if you look at the one that I'm highlighting on right now, you can see the main thumbnail, the main clip art. But when I move, you can also see the background change. And that's what those two folders are. All right, so you can see it changes every time I move, just highlighting what movie I'm selected. I like how everything's set up. I love the fact that this is truly giving me control over my media again. Just like what Plex used to do before they made all those changes, this is completely free, no subscription. Yes, there's a initial investment, like I said, in the NAS, in the drives, getting the content, but once you do that, this is up to you to control. I've owned this NAS for over six years now, and this hasn't changed. They haven't tried to sneak anything in there. This is truly under my control, and only me and myself and I can access my media and can decide what gets put on this media server, which I do like. Let's jump over to my mobile device. All right, so here we are on the mobile device. This is my iPhone look at the top right you can see i am on 5g so this should see me as being out of the household so here's a ds video application i did log in with my quick connect account and we'll just give it a second for it to finish logging in all right so here we are in the app so technically i'm out of the household i'm on the road i'm at work on a trip whatever the case is and here we are um still have access to everything that's in my DS video library. So click on that. You can see movies at the TV shows, which I haven't um, updated as well. Probably do a separate video on that. That does have a slightly different configuration. Um, but movies is basically what we're focusing on today. You can see everything is starting to pop in. Looks really good. Um, at the bottom, you can see I can browse by folder. All right, so I have 4K videos, action, adventure. So those are those subfolders within the main movies folder that I had. I have Urban War as well. I have just added as well, which should be everything <laughs> just watched. All right, so I did start watching that. Just released as well, which shouldn't be anything in there. I can change the view as well. All right, so whichever one you prefer on your mobile device does also work in landscape and looks really smooth in my opinion. Um, everything's starting to come in really good. Seems like it's doing a pretty good job picking up um, how I had it named from Plex, which was every word in the name of the movie, a dot, 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 then a year. But seem like that's working fine. So if you already have a, a Plex library or a library can essentially use the same content and this should work fine with it. Let me just click on something, kind of show you the ins and outs. You can see, can go ahead and start playing it. 
it does have to transcode on the fly so it might take a little bit longer for it to to load as opposed to being in the household um, but you can see I can skip ahead seems to work fine all right and get out of it and again good part about this is that this can be landscape or um, it can be um, portrait as well so I'm gonna actually stop this video right here I'm gonna leave some resources in the description the complete setup this was really laid out pretty well by Synology as far as just getting everything set up where to find those links so I'll leave that full um, set up in the description but if you guys have any specific questions or want me to do a more in-depth video let me know drop your questions in the comments and maybe I can tackle those maybe a Q&A video just answering some of those questions and also I, I do plan on going back and probably doing something on the TV shows just to show you how to get that up and running so just want to give you a brief intro just some insight of what's required to get the setup I feel like it wasn't ready for prime time but with the most recent updates from Synology um, this seems like this is a real competitor to your Plex to your NB to your Jellyfin um, especially what's going on with Plex and a lot of people going left this is free one once you make that initial purchase to your network attached storage and if you already have a NAS from Synology this is something that you want to look into so that's it for this video if you're new to the channel subscribe drop your thoughts and questions in the comments thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one